All right, let's try that again. For some reason, it, uh, it stopped, and I don't want it to stop because I don't know how to do any editing yet. Um, so once again, uh, now I'm all discombobulated. Welcome to the Buddy Show. Let's start there. Uh, we are, in fact, prime time, except we're not prime time. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon here. Coast to coast and border to border. Uh, coming to you from the beautiful city of Chiang Mai, Thailand, in northern Thailand. Um, this is going to be about moving, my moving to Thailand, my retiring and moving uh, to foreign countries. My daughter had told me that her mother was retiring at the age of 62. Retirement was never, had never really crossed my mind. Not that I enjoyed my last job, uh, I certainly enjoyed my career as a museum teacher and manager uh, in the living history world. I manage a fam famous uh, wooden ship called Mayflower. You've probably heard of it if you're an American. And um, so she, it, it, it kind of hit me like because I was in a job, I was working in a call center uh, initially for, I did that for a year when I moved to Green Bay, Wisconsin and um, made, made pretty good money. And then I got a promotion to research claims, I think is what the job was. That job sucked. I hated it. I was I sucked at it, and I was probably going to lose my job. And this is right right around when um, COVID allegedly hit, and um, so I'm on a phone call with my daughter, and she tells me again. She tells me her mother is going to retire at 62, and I thought retire. Wow, I don't have to do this job anymore. And what I what I wanted to do, what I was sort of um, putting in the works, is that I could take the job that I was at since, since it was phones and I, could, I was working at home at the time anyway and moved to Las Vegas um, simply because they had a Chinatown there and I wanted some good Chinese food which you cannot get in Green Bay, Wisconsin lacking very many Chinese food. You can get good Thai food because there's Hmong people there. Um, and I wanted to do that because ultimately what I wanted to do was be a writer and maybe even do some of this stuff uh, and I thought, well, that'll be a better situation for me to become a writer after work um, because the weather is better. And I, you know, I hate winter, uh, having grown up with it in Massachusetts. And then uh, when, when my daughter told me her mother was going to retire, I started thinking, retirement? Huh. Well, how, about how much will I make? And I figured it out, and I was pretty accurate. And uh, I thought, I can't live. Here, I, you know, I could live here in a slum area on that kind of money, and, and Wisconsin, Green Bay was actually fairly cheap. I, I had a two-bedroom apartment with heat included, and which is important in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and it was seven hundred and sixty dollars a month, which you know you can't really get anything for it. Plymouth, Massachusetts, a one-bedroom without utilities is probably twelve hundred dollars, maybe more now. I've been gone a long time. And uh, so I started uh, looking on you know, YouTube, which is what you're doing now, and watching particular um, YouTubers, particularly in Mexico, and because that was, Mexico was close and I knew it was cheap. And I knew I could go there without any hassle, which is still true. So I started watching um, Tangerine Travels, uh, Two Travelers in Mexico, and the Kinetic Kennens, among others, but those are the ones that, that stick in my mind. And um, and so I was watching Maddie and, uh, and uh, God, what's her name? His name, uh, Jordan, and Tangerine Travels. And they were in Guadalajara, Mexico. So I thought, okay, that looks like a cool place. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Guadalajara, Mexico. And so I did. I up and moved and uh, went to Mexico and stayed there for seven months. I got interviewed by two other YouTubers, my friend Gio in the Philippines and King Lee. I don't know what King's... Um, channel is called anymore. I think he's doing sports now and not so much travel. And um, and got a lot of contacts through those interviews. People came to Mexico to visit me and would, would um, you know, email me for advice and stuff like that. Let me just sit over here to center up a little bit. And um, you, you see the, this wallpaper? This is weird. I, this is one of the things I didn't like about living here, but it just says, there's some weird... Anyway, um, 
So I, I did. I moved to Guadalajara, Mexico. I have, actually, I have some notes there. If you, if you watch my channel, though, you know I normally just wing it. I'm sort of doing that now. Um, so my daughter and her mother were very instrumental in my deciding to retire, and those YouTubers were instrumental in dis having me decide to go to Mexico. And I stayed, I stayed in Guadalajara for six months. I liked it. It's a little too big for me, uh, as was Bangkok when I was there. We'll get to that. And um, uh, Gio and King, Bali. And so my friend Gio had, had contacted me. He had broken up with his girlfriend. He has a wonderful new girlfriend now. Uh, and he put forth the idea of maybe let's, you know, we, let's go split a place in Indonesia. And he sent me a, a still of a villa in Bali. And I thought, how about Bali? He says, no, I'd rather go to Jakarta. I thought, I don't know, I'd like to go to Bali. So uh, I'm struggling uh, in Mexico, not for any particular reason, but uh, my visa, my, my tourist card was coming due. And in fact, I overstayed for a couple of weeks in Mexico the first time, not to any um, result at all. You know, they just didn't care. Um, and uh, Gio had decided he's not going to move there, and so I still did. I moved to Bali, Indonesia, and I lived there for six months. Uh, met um, my friends Rosemary and Simon, and sublet a house from them as they were going back to their house that they owned. And um, I stayed in the house for probably two months, and it was it was a nice house. It was two bedrooms, in a in a very traditional uh, compound, Thai uh, uh, Balinese compound. Everyone else was Balinese, and uh, but there was no pool. And if you know anything about Southeast Asia or Florida, uh, it's they're tropical, and and I just said I I can't. I can't not have a pool. I'm not a swimmer, but just to be able to go into the water every afternoon was a big boon. So I moved to a three-star hotel. Uh, I, both places I was paying 4,500,000 rupiah a month, which at that time was about $350, everything included. And the second place was nice. It had, had the pool, which I went in every day. I was also writing every day. And uh, Bali, I could stay in for six months, and then I could have uh, paid $1,200 a year and got a retirement visa there because I was already in country. The b visa that I had was, you know, frankly, kind of a bullshit visa. It was a business visa. Anything is possible with money. And uh, so six months came up, and I decided, well, I, I don't think I want to stay in Bali. I don't remember all of the reasons. Uh, but it just it stuck in my head, and so uh, an offer was made to me by a friend and his wife to come and stay with them in New Hampshire. And I stayed in New Hampshire for about seven months, and it became winter, and if you remember what I said about winter sucking, it still did. And so I, I decided, um, my, my daughter had said, let's you know come to visit her husband and her in California. They would pay for my flights and for my Airbnb, which Thank you. I love you for that, both. Um, and I, I decided at that point, it, it, since I'm leaving, uh, let's do the jump off. And and where am I going to go? And so from, I was going to go to San Juan del Sur in Nicaragua. And, and obviously I didn't. I couldn't. I had the wrong PCR test or something. And I'm in Mexico City and my friends, uh, Paulette and, and um, sorry, the, brain farts, senior. And uh, Mark said, come and stay with us in San Luis Potosi. And I did. I stayed with them for a week there. I got a room in a, a sort of a group home with four other guys, younger, obviously younger than me, almost everybody is. And I lived there for six months, and then I, I was ready to come back to Southeast Asia. My friend Jason said, you know, come to Vietnam. And just before, and I had a ticket. I bought a ticket and got the visa. And, just before that, he decided he was going to leave because he was getting screwed and ripped off by the school he was working in. Uh, he's Asia unscripted, by the way, if you want to look at his videos. And uh, so I went to Vietnam and I stayed there for a few days. I was in Saigon. Very cool. I'm going to go back at some point. One of the things that sort of swayed me about not staying in Vietnam was uh, there are no long-term visas. I would have to do a visa run every 
90 or 30 days, you know, to Laos or to Cambodia. And I just thought that's going to get old after a while. So uh, I read about education visas here in Thailand, which are good for a year, and that's actually what I'm getting soon. Initially, I had talked to someone about a retirement visa. I didn't have a Thai bank account, so I couldn't get one of those. I'm going to still do that. Um, once I get my education visa, I'll get a um, I'll get a Thai bank account, and then next year, likely I'll just get that uh, retirement visa. And which which it's a set price. It's for the agent, you know, agent, and then so much a year for the retirement visa. The, the, the one-time price for the agent goes away after the first year and then it's only, I don't know, $600, $700 a year to, to keep renewing their retirement visa. So that's how I ended up here in, uh, in Thailand and Chiang Mai because it just, it seemed like a place for me. And uh, I was in Bangkok for three nights and it, it, <laughs> Bangkok is too big. It's as big or bigger as Guadalajara. And uh, I stayed at a really cool guest house. It's, it's actually, I think it's my most watched video on this channel. And uh, that was nice, it was very cool, very traditional, very Thai, very Thai neighborhood. Then I moved over to the Niman area, which is sort of backpacker, central, hip. It, it was nice, it was too Western for me. Uh, and I started looking around for condos which is what they call apartments here, and the place I live in now, which I'm, I'm still going to do a, a, um, a video tour of, just waiting for the weather to get better. And, um, and chose this one because it's 50 square meters as opposed to the other two that I looked at. One was in Niman and one was here, I think, yeah, in this building. Um, that one was 12,000 baht a month. And the other one was 10,000 baht a month, but was only 35 square meters. So this is this is a lot bigger. Still not big by any means. Certainly not as big as a two-bedroom apartment uh, in De Pere, Wisconsin, which was huge. Uh, so I'm paying 10,000 baht a month, which at today's rate I think is 271 dollars, which is pretty good. I mean, I now I have to pay electricity, water, and and internet, and I think the internet is something like $17 a month. Water, I just paid for 10 days worth. It was 55 baht, so a dollar and a quarter, a dollar and a half. And um, electricity, uh, when you when I do my tour, you'll see why my electricity bill is a little high. There's an electric bidet here, which is wicked cool, <laughs> but it's not worth, I think, um, for me to keep the electricity and I would unplug it when I'm not in use. Uh, but there's also a bum gun. Uh, we'll talk about bum guns when I do the uh, uh, tour. It's pretty much as you might imagine it is used for. Uh, and uh, they're, they're ubiquitous here and everybody uses them and toilet paper is only used for drying your bum. Uh, so let's see, cost of living. So that's my cost of living. Um, I eat out a lot, as you've seen here on these videos, because I, I eat local and I can, I can eat for, you know, under $5 a day and do, and the food is delicious, it's amazing. I live in the northwestern corner just outside the old city. It's not an ideal location, um, but I, I wanted to get into a place and, you know, at my age, if you are my age, you will know this a year passes by fairly quickly. Uh, I know that a lot of people are going to want to know because I got a lot of questions about this um, having been interviewed by Filipino expat, Philippine, Philippines expat um, YouTubers is dating. A lot of guys move to Southeast Asia, Philippines in particular, because uh, of the age gap relationships. Now this might, you might not be a thing that um, older Western women can appreciate, but none of us care. Um, and that age gap relationship exists here in Thailand as well. So uh, I've not availed myself on it. Uh, I've been alone for three years. The, my last two in, uh, habitation arrangements were living with my two friends and then living with other people. And I've really 
become accustomed to living alone, so I'm very happy to living in a one-bedroom apartment here. And once I get my visa, my new education visa, and settled in, um, and maybe we'll do a little teaching of English online and for extra money, then I'll put myself out into the dating market again. I'm not in any hurry. I'm very picky about that sort of thing. And so for you guys that that's going to be your central question, you want to retire and move in, to a, a country where you can date and possibly marry a younger woman, there you go. That's what it is here, similar to the Philippines. The difference is, of course, Filipinos speak English. And there's a lot more English spoken both when I li lived in Mexico and here as well. And to a lesser degree in Vietnam, more than you might imagine. It's much easier to get around without knowing the language than maybe people lead you on to believe. Mexico was easier because even though I might not be able to understand the words reading, I could read the words. Uh, Thai is a different script entirely. It's, uh, it's not like Chinese, although it is tonal. I do intend to learn the language uh, because it's just going to make things a lot easier. And uh, so, let's see. So this is getting long now. We're over 16 minutes. If you have any questions, put them in the uh, comments down below. Please like and please subscribe. Uh, ring the bell if that suits you. Um, I need more subscribers. And uh, thanks for listening. Until then, stay frosty.